uh, I'm Stephen Mullum. I'm an enterprise systems architect at the RSPCA. So uh, that involves you know, playing with all the new toys, looking at uh, the platforms and the systems that we've got, seeing how they work, and then pass them over to a developer to actually make something happen with it. Um, just I hope you all already know, you know a little bit about the RSPCA and, and what we do. We, you know, we were established in 1824, so you know, we're the, the world's oldest animal welfare charity. Um, we're entirely funded through public donations, uh, so we don't get any government funding. Uh, and our purpose is fairly obvious, you know, promote kindness and prevent cruelty to animals. What does that actually mean? Um, well, in 2013, uh, we investigated, so our inspectors went out and investigated 150,000 complaints of cruelty. Uh, we've rescued and collected 250,000 animals, and uh, we've rehomed 50, 55,000 animals last year. So, what I'm going to go through today is just a, a little bit of background as to you know, why we chose LifeRay, how our website has evolved over the last few years, um, what we use LifeRay for, you know, how we actually use it, a little bit of a, a technical uh, dive then into you know, under the hood, um, how that stacks up, and also a little bit about you know, what we're wanting to look at next uh, on, on the roadmap. So I've worked for the RSPCA for about 10 years now, and back in 2004, in the dim and distant past, our website was very static, traditional, um, so to speak, and it was very much, again, you know, how a lot of people have been saying, of, of it's how we presented ourselves to the general public. So it, it wasn't, you know, how people wanted to communicate and work with us, but at more our internal department structures and what have you. Um, because it was, you know, quite static and, and traditional, it, any minor changes really needed to come down to IT to have somebody, you know, sit and code a bit of HTML, CSS, whatever. Um, and, and so getting those changes through, we became more of a bottleneck to the process. Um, that's because, you know, the layout and the content were so sort of tightly linked together. So 2009, we started looking at, uh, you know, a strategy to start exposing, you know, the, the website and the RSPCO as to how people wanted to work with us. And in order to do that, you know, we wanted a more dynamic website. So we looked at LifeRay as a way of, of kind of building this, this set of, of tools, a toolbox of, of portlets that our digital media um, team that had been newly created could then start kind of forming a website in a much more drag and drop visual interface. And from, from doing this now, we've got a, uh, you know, a development team that's releasing you know, new functionality on the website in an agile way you know, every month. So, in 2014, we're now looking at uh, that strategy again and kind of bringing that more sort of streamlined way of working with uh, the public. We are you know, making sure that our website is now you know, fully responsive. It's, you know, whether on tablet, mobile phone, desktop, you'll be able to, to come in and, and interact with us how you want to. Uh, but we're also bringing in a lot more of, of kind of the local branch data that you know, people are wanting to look for. And that's what I'm going to go into a little bit more detail on. Just a few numbers. Um, so 1.1 million visits a month, according to Google Analytics. Um, we make, on average, you know, 70,000 uh, pounds through donations. So that's credit card and direct debit transactions, what have you. Um, and we have 130,000 registered users on the system. So those are, you know, LifeRay registered users that can log in, raise inquiries with us, you know, manage their their preferences. There's new newsletter signups uh, and what have you. So we don't just use LifeRay for our main website. We've got you know, several different microsites uh, and other kind of initiatives that are powered through the platform. Um, you know, as has been said, you know, we, we set up sort of several microsites for you know, many little campaigns. So we've got you know, things like the, the, the puppy contract, you know, nice, simple, focused on, on one particular area, all the way through to then you know, our, our main website, our specific donation pages. And what we're you know, now sort of looking at rolling out further is, is our branch Extranet, which is the link in the top top left there, uh, and that's you know as we are, are progressing that we're looking more at rolling that out potentially as an intranet as well internally. So the RSPCA itself is the national society. We control kind of the general brand um, and the, uh, the the inspectors that are going out in vans on a regular basis, a few animal centres and, and hospitals. But a lot of the, the the work done by the RSPCA is is done by our local branches. 
So um, this is more of a, sort of like a franchise kind of setup. You know, we control policy and things and, and push those out to, uh, to, to the branches. With the link, this is how we've now you know got 162 of those branches online, and we use this to to kind of deal with the content, the policies, the processes, and the procedures. Uh, so we've got 100 th uh, sorry 1,000 branch users um, who log in in order to, to interact with us, manage the applications that we've delivered out for them, and we've built these sort of five applications currently so that they can you know manage the animals that are in their care, they can advertise their volunteering opportunities, and they can you know, manage the details of their branch. So the way we've tried to structure this is that by the branches coming in and working with us on the link, they're providing that community-driven you know, local content, which we can then take advantage of on the main public website. But at the bottom here, we have um, what we've referred to as, as Weeble. Um, these are, are kind of the local branch microsites that, that they can keep update and fresh with, uh, with, with information whilst we pull that through on the main website. So we've got several different applications, and all of them have a particularly interesting uh, acronym. I think our development team comes up with those as they're, as they're building them. So this is, this is Brad and Ned as our branch directory and our national establishment directory. And so this allows our branches to come in and update the details of who their uh, branch officials are. They can put you know, the details of, of where each of their animal centers are, their charity shops, what services they're offering. So that those can then be exposed on the website. So if you come Come to the main RSPCA website, type in your postcode, and you can see the local uh, facilities in your area. One of the big draws to our website is um, is, is the, the pet search functionality. So this is really you know what uh, a lot of people come to our website for. We have a lot of animals in our rehoming centres, and this is a way that the branches through through the link can come on and put in the details of each of the animals in their care. So you know they they can include numerous images. They can put video links up to to YouTube, and then when the member of public is coming along, they can you know they have the the, the nicer sort of detailed view to to sort of see information about that animal. So to go sort of under the hood a little bit with that, uh, in 2010 when we started a lot of this, the RSPCA went through a, a sort of a, a service oriented architecture approach. So rather than have each of our application uh, functionality and data in silos, we wanted to split that out so we could you know, reuse each of those, those pieces of functions and, and reuse that data. So at the bottom here we've got our, our sort of you know, database systems. We've got a couple of data services, so that's dealing with your, you know, your create, read, update, delete, CRUD style operations. So we've got our establishment management service there, which is how we can maintain and, and pull out details of the establishment, the animal centre, uh, you know, the details, contact details, addresses, that kind of stuff. We have our, our pet management data service, so that's how we, we can then you know, create animals at that establishment, update their details, read their details. And then on the, on the, the left here, we have our, our business service, one of our business services. So this is our, just our distance sorting service. We can you know, chuck in a, a bunch of postcodes and a source address and and sorts you know, as the crows flies for each of those. Above that, we then have our pet management business service. So this is kind of dealing with the orchestration of all of those services so that we can you know, dip into our establishment, pull out the local uh, services that are offered, go then and find out the animals in there and, and do that sort and then expose that up to, to the user. So then we get into our, our actual portlets. So this is where LifeRay is coming into the equation. So these are all you know, spring-based jQuery uh, portlets. On the, uh, the right there is our Opera portlets. So those are the actual pet search management. That's what the branches are using to actually put in all the animal details in there. Um, and uh, sort of managing you know, which animals are available for rehoming, that kind of stuff, which all goes out through the link. Um, and then on the left here, we have our, our pet search portlets. So this is our search portlets, detail portlets, um, uh, and, and kind of you know, postcode lookups, that kind of stuff. Uh, and so this is where, you know, by writing this, this sort of toolkit approach, using LifeRay to expose each of these portlets, um, we can reuse those all over, the, all over the shop. So we've got you know, the main public website, we have our pet search pages, but we can create specific um, uh, you know, campaign-focused versions of these pages as well and pull in those same portlets in order to just sort of show a, a filtered view. So here we had, our, um, you know, we had a campaign about you know, Staffordshire Bull Terriers and just showed uh, the, the pets that were available around there. And again, all of this is driven through the branches interacting with us so that they can be putting up their animals on their local branch pages, but we're pulling all that data back through for the, uh, the main website. Under the hood, 
Um, so the idea being is that no matter who you are, you know what device you're you're coming in through, um, you, you come in. We've got a, a two data centres uh, sort of spread out across London. Um, you come in through our, our uh, Apache web servers, which are dealing with with all the requests, caching all the local content, that kind of thing. And come down then to our, our LifeRay portal servers, which you know deal with all of the the, the crunchy functionality, the interesting stuff. Um, allow our digital media guys to sort of build pages and what have you. And then we have our, our sort of CMS under the hood, our service bus sitting there actually powering the data for a lot of the, the, the site, and then our, our database at the bottom there. So that's kind of where we've got to today um, uh, and, and you know, how we use the platform. What we're now looking for uh, is, is you know, the, the rest of the roadmap going forward into the future. So we're very keen, as I say, we've just done our upgrade from LifeRay 6 to uh, LifeRay 6.1. And with that, we've seen a lot of maturity and, and uh, stability into the platform. Uh, and again, that, we've seen that maturity into the LifeRay CMS. So we're, we're sort of really interested in looking at how we can start to to you know, use the the, the 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 CMS there for you know blogging and to uh, to kind of you know refresh the, the content around our website. Um, we're very keen on again looking at you know what's happening with LifeRay 6.2 and potentially 7, depending upon what you know functionality that's that's giving us. Um, but the, the next big push that we're we're really looking forward to uh, for the next year is is you know cloud hosting this using you know platform as a service um, to really try and sort of push the RSPCA's technical strategy forward in that direction. Um, as part of that, we've been you know Know, looking at, at Salesforce uh, for a couple of our, our bigger internal applications, so we're really interested now to see how we can integrate, you know, those platforms together to really get, you know, social interaction, understanding, profiling people, and, and really, you know, get the, the whole system working as a suite. And I think I have gone quite quickly, but <laughs> there we are. Any questions? We'll take questions now. If you have a question, Mike will come to you. Just raise your hand. Ah, Mike will not come to you because we are very early. But I have it right here. There you go. Just interested in how many. So you showed us a slide with some figures for your site, and I'm mm -hmm. just wondering what proportion of every one of those figures, um, how that related to the the organisation as a whole. So really, I'm trying to work out how important is the website to you in terms of getting users, engaging users. Off the top of my head, I don't know the specific answers to those. I have got some business users here as well who will uh, hopefully have some numbers potentially uh, if you want to have a talk to them later. Um, but you know, this is the life is used for our, our kind of main public facing websites um, and uh, our kind of communication out but you know in terms of, of the, the the split between that and our donations for the, the rest of our income I'm not sure mm -hmm. any more questions over there hi my name is Lex with Firelay uh, why are you going to go to cloud hosting and how are you going to do that um, well we are um, just very interested to see the, the elastic nature of that. So in certain points where we've had very large scale campaigns and we've not been able to move quickly to, uh, to, to expand you know, the, the, the number of users that we can have into our website at any one time. So we're just interested in, in uh, the elastic nature of the cloud, how we can expose more functionality out that way and um, just generally avoid having to support our own tin and work in that, that sort of traditional manner. And there's another question over there. Hi, um, I work with Citizens of Ice, so we're similar to you in a kind of membership organisation, mm -hmm. and uh, we've got thousands and thousands of volunteers with a wide range of friendliness to digital mm -hmm. uh, services, uh, and uh, I'm intrigued about how you got your local groups involved and the amount of work there was and how the life rate system has helped you to do that as well, how to get ordinary people involved in this process, I suppose. Yeah. And that's, that's interesting because of the nature of the RSPCA and the kind of the branch network, uh, we don't have much control. We can't dictate to them how they will, will work with us, which is where what we managed to do was just show value of the platform. And once we started getting some branches involved, we had a couple of very, very friendly branches that, that really wanted to work with us. And the rest of the branch network then saw the value they were getting out of that, how they were getting animals through on the website and, and the functionality we were offering. That sort of started a bit of an avalanche of, of then more and more coming to, to work with us on board. Okay, any more questions over there?
Hi, Eleanor Econ from Bristol City Council. Mm -hmm. Do you do all your development in house? Yes. Um, and how I was interested in the size of your development. How many development team members do you have? Yeah. Um, so uh, we do uh, have a development team in house uh, for the, the vast majority of the work. Certainly, all of it on, on the LifeRed platform. We've got. Um, Seven developers, I think. Now I'm looking at my web architect, who's kind of doing this at me. Um, so yeah, we have we have an internal development team uh, of uh, split between some very techy Java coders who are building all, a lot of the, the portlet infrastructure and the portlet you know work, and then we've got a couple of, uh, of specifically kind of UI jQuery um, developers who do more of the, the bells and whistles on top. Um, but yeah, they're working in a kind of a very agile methodology, so that every month we're releasing new functionality and, and showing you know new systems, new uh, uh, applications, new functions on, onto the, the main website. All right. One more question. Anybody? Okay. Well, Stephen, okay. thank you very much. Thank you for this great presentation. Can we give Stephen a hand? Mm.